One of the biggest secrets to sales in our world today, right now, where I, I believe where we're at, is authenticity. People just want to know what's real, what's raw, and they want it from your heart. What's this biggest secret to being good at sales? You know what it is? Love what the hell you're selling. Love it so much that you feel bad that people don't get it. So that's the first thing, is love it. Love it in a way that maybe you've never imagined. Now I want you to think about something. I want you to think about the people that you feel connected to. People that sell to you that you don't feel like you're a salesman. If you don't like sales, that means somebody, a cheesy salesperson got you at some, some phase of your life. Or when you were a kid, you watched all the movies and every sales guy was bad. Or maybe your parents didn't like salespeople, right? Again, even though every, we're all getting sold every day, right? But something made you feel bad about selling. But as we're shifting this disservice, if we don't get to take action, it's the best version of me. Now I'm going to give you another huge secret. You ready? People overthink sales on a massive scale. They think that the sales pitch has to be perfect, the perfect tempo. If you're on stage, it's got to be the perfect slides. If you're doing something online, it's got to be the perfect page. If you do something in person, you have to wait and talk a certain way. Do you want to know one of the biggest secrets to sales in our world today, right now, where I, I believe where we're at, is authenticity. People just want to know what's real, what's raw, and they want it from your heart. If you think about the people that you've connected with in your life, remember this phrase. People will buy from you, say yes to you, when they feel understood, not just when they understand you. I want you to listen to that again. People will buy from you, say yes to you, when they feel understood, not just when they understand you. Let's take, let's take an example, and then I'm going to circle back around with authenticity. So I'm going to park authenticity, put a pin in it, and come back to it. But think about this. Think about, let's just say the quintessential sales area is used cars or new cars. And I know that world is changing, but let's just talk about uh, the way it was for the last 100 years, 50 years. Saturday afternoon, your car shopping, you pull into the dealership, there's 10 dealers waiting in the window, waiting for you to come in. You pull up, one of them gets a high five, your turn. Go, go chat with the guy in the Tesla or whatever, right? Now think about this scenario. Same scenario, person comes up and says, hey, glad, for, glad you're here today. Nice Saturday, right? Hey, listen, I just wanted to let you know, I've been selling these cars for 27 years. I know them inside and out. I've been voted the top sales guy 14 months out of the last five years. Uh, and it's because I care about the client. This is what I do. And I can see you're here today and you'd love a, a sporty car, but what, well, let me guess. You want something that's a little good on the gas, maybe eco friendly so you can do your part. I got this amazing two-seater, it's fast, it's eco-friendly, it's this, it's that. Let's go take a look at it. Now that's a sales guy that could make a job for 27 years and he wants you to understand him. But what if you went there that day because you, are, you just had your third child and you want your wife to have something that's not a minivan but the big SUVs are too clunky and you're just looking for something in the middle, nothing even close. Now that same salesperson wants you to understand him. What if there's a salesperson that comes out and you see him walking over to you and you're like, oh shit, here comes a sales guy. You roll down your window or you get out and he says, hey, listen, first off, I know it's a Saturday. We all work on commissions, authenticity, transparency. We all work on commissions. It's my turn up. I gotta, I get you, but I just want to tell you, let me just back up. I just want to ask, why are you here today? What's your family like? What, uh, how can I serve you? Tell me a little bit about you. And all of a sudden the person says, wow. Immediately, who do you have rapport with immediately? Sales guy number two. 
because he, wanted, he wants to, you to feel understood, and probably not on purpose, that's just who he is. All of a sudden you go, well, we had our third kid, and you go, oh my God, I'm on my fourth, I get it. My wife hated the minivan when I thought about bringing it to her house. She was like, are you crazy? But then I looked at the monster Escalade, and she's, that's a bus. But we figured out something in between. W would you be open to something kind of in the middle? It's kind of like the sporty, uh, smaller SUV. All of a sudden, you're laughing, high-fiving, talking about the names of your kids, what's going on in school, they're playing softball or baseball and what they do. And all of a sudden, you're sitting in the car going, it's a good guy. And what did he do most of the time? He listened. He was authentic. He was transparent. So I want you to think about that. So let's get back to authenticity. Here's where I believe we are. I follow the market really strongly. I follow, I shouldn't say the market, that would sound like the stock market. I follow the heartbeat of America, the state of the union when it comes to marketing and sales. And what I believe is when we're, when the economy crashed in 07, uh, 06, 07, 08, 07 it started, you know, people were scared. People just wanted to protect. Uh, if you had some money, you wanted to hold on to it. If you, wanted, you didn't really want to get the boat, you wanted to make sure your savings didn't go away. You didn't want to buy the second house, you wanted to make sure you didn't get a, have a foreclosure on the house you were in, right? So in that time frame, people are more conservative. So you want to let people understand that you know that it's a time of being conservative, but why does your product, your service, or what you offer, life coaching, it's a great time to be a conservative time. You just don't want to go, give me, let me give you life coaching so you can be rich. It's like, give me life coaching so you can handle all the change that's going on in our country, right? So you just change. It's more of a conservative feel. Does that make sense to everybody? Let me know if you think it does. Um, and then after a six, four or five years after the market crashed, then everybody kind of gets complacent. Um, uh, I've heard people say, get too complacent, right? And then it's a time to change your marketing again and change what you're saying because now you kind of want to get people to take action. They're getting used to the foreclosures. They're used to things going sideways. They're, they're, they're used to the negative and we want to start them to see aspirational. And then you get to a place where we're at right now. And this is what I want to share with you guys, no matter what you're in, is we're in a, in a, in a place where the, uh, the economy is booming. Unemployment's the lowest it's been in a long time. Interest rates are still low. Amazing time for real estate and all the other things. Um, but do we all know that we've just had a 10-year run in real estate, kind of like, or the turn and then 10 years, you know, kind of between the last uh, 12 years since the last crash started. Stock market, 10-year run. Interest rates been low for way, way long time. So do we all know kind of in the back of our head that winter is coming, call it what you want, uh, a correction in the stock market, a change in interest rates, inflation change. Listen, I only can go by <clears throat> what's happened over the last hundred years. It's inevitable there's an adjustment. So I feel like we're in this place, um, I feel like we're in this place that we're aspirational. You're here, you want the next level, you want more, you want abundance, and you should. You should go after the full version of you, your full potential, next level. But deep down, people are like, but what if things change? Now, I tell you that for a reason, because I think circling all the way back to authenticity, I want to encourage each and every one of you to do the video you've been thinking about doing. To do one for if, whether you're in real estate, you're a lawyer, you're in life coaching, do a video to help sell what you do. Write a letter, write a sales letter. Start your marketing, start your advertising, scale the company you have, finally start the business and stop overthinking what your marketing and sales copy and training is gonna be like and start living from your heart. People want real now more than ever before in history. With the way our government is, president is, people just want it like it is. I think we're done with the hype. The hype, we had hype in the 80s, we had hype you know, 15 years ago and we're having a hype now. No one wants hype, they want what's real. So I wanna tell you, there couldn't be a better time to scale your business, start your business, or use these same strategies with the people you work with so you can grow within your company. 
This is a time to be the most authentic version of yourself and about your product and about your company and tell the truth. I'm gonna take it one step further. Now, I know this is going in the weeds here and I know some of, my, some of this I've shared with you guys before and I'm gonna to continue to share because it's like anything. How many times do you listen to a good song? A song you like, do you listen to it 500 times? 300 times? But you guys will hear one thing about marketing, go, oh, I heard that, but are you actually taking action? Let me ask you, have some of you heard me share how important marketing and sales are? Are you doing it? It's like, I, I had somebody say something once I thought was amazing. He said, it was a guy I gave, uh, 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 it was a guy I gave advice to, he didn't take it. He came back six months later, asked me for time and consulting again. I said, I'm not gonna take your money in consulting. The guy said, why? He said, because you didn't do anything with the first good idea I gave you. Why would I give you another one? <laughs> Think about that. If you've heard any of my talk on marketing and sales and how important it is, what have you done with it? Where have you implemented it? Where have you found yourself getting more authentic? Practicing on video, practicing writing. If you build it, they won't come. So you know we have to do this. So then why aren't you already doing it? And that's why I want to really hammer this home today because I want you to think about this time, this, this phase, this place we're at in our life. I want to give you permission to just be the most authentic version of you. And even taking, there's one, I'm thinking out loud right now, but the most authentic version of you, um, I want you to think about, uh, I'll get back to it. I, I, it was something, I, I digressed for a second. Um, the other thing, okay, I'm gonna go on to the next thing. And I'm gonna, I know in the middle of me talking, I'm gonna think about what I was sharing with being authentic and why it's so important. Um, okay, uh, that one, let, me, let me step over for a second. Put a pin in authenticity, I'm gonna come back to it on why now is so great. But think about this. Most people, many people, when it comes to selling, and I, I see this on stage, I want you to really, think about how I get to visualize this because I get to speak on some, I'm speaking tonight in, at the Biltmore in, in Phoenix at my friend Shanda Stumpner's event. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. I'm going to speak on this topic. Um, and here's what I know. When I get to see all these speakers and I'll watch a speaker go up and be so in love with what they do. And I want you to think about this in your area of your life. Think if right now, okay, we're, there's hundreds of you guys on, right? Think if right now you guys came to one of my live events. There's 5,000 people in the audience. And I say, go out there and talk from the heart, authentic, raw. Just go out there and impact those people's lives on whatever it is you do. Life coach, real estate, love, dentistry, doesn't matter what you do, go out there and impact them. And then when you're done, I want you to tell them to do something, a call to action, buy your product, buy one of your houses, sell you one of their houses, um, become one of your life coaching clients, have them do something. Here's what I watch. And I watch this with professionals, guys. This, this is, I'm on stage with some of the best in the world. And I'll watch somebody go out there and they're, they're great at productivity. And they'll be passionate. It's like, listen, if you don't figure out exactly what it is that moves the needle, then you're just gonna spin your wheels and they'll spend an hour and give so much wisdom and information and, and enthusiasm and energy and transparency. I remember what I was gonna say. Okay, throw me a pen, Tanner. Uh, th so much transparency and love. Okay, I'm going to write something down so I don't forget. Share. Okay. So much transparency and love. And then all of a sudden when they get to at the time to ask them to be a life coach, to sell your house, it's like, yes, yes. And all of a sudden they think and they go, oh my God, I got to sell something to these people. Oh my God. And then all of a sudden they're a different person. They straighten up. They step back. Literally if they're in the front of the stage, passion, 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 passion. Now they go to sell and they step back and almost apologetically offer. Well, um, now I wanna let you know about this opportunity to have that you guys can get involved with today. Click, click, a few slides, thank you, and like run off stage. And I'm like, oh my God. When people do that, when you do that, you're doing everybody in the audience, in the world, in your space a disservice because they loved what you have and now you're apologizing to get them to take action. Remember in most cases, if people don't pay, they don't pay attention. Right? If this was free, I don't know if half of you would show up. You're cutting me a check every month. You show up. 
find a way to know that you're doing them a disservice in all areas of your life. So I watch that. So an exercise I can't do with you here, but I do it live, is I'll get people in, in groups. Somebody's A, someone's B. And I said, think about the thing you're most excited about in your life. A book, your company, your love life, uh, your health, something you love to talk about. I want you guys to think about. What do you love, 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 love to talk about? Do you love about talking about eating vegan? Do you love about lean protein? Do you love to talk about working out? Do you love to talk about personal development? Do you love to talk about real estate? What is it that you love? Your, your kids, what is it that you love to talk about? And I want you to think about what we do with selling. What if it was talking about your favorite movie in the world, right? I used to love forever, I loved It's a Wonderful Life. I've been watching that since I was a little kid. But what if I told you to watch the, the It's a Wonderful Life and I was a little, um, uh, let's just start with no enthusiasm, right? No enthusiasm, right? Because we're talking about enthusiastic because you love what you do so much. I love It's a Wonderful Life. I've sold that to hundreds of people through the years. So think about this. But what if I said A Wonderful Life, I was like, hey, you guys, you guys should watch The Wonderful Life. It's, it's a really good movie. Um, the main character uh, thinks money is everything and he can't provide a lot of money to his family. Um, so when things really collapse, um, you know, he runs off and he's, he just wants to die. And, uh, you know, but then he doesn't really die and then he sees the world without him and he realizes that friends are the most important thing and family and love is really important. Um, yeah, you should watch it. Would you go watch that movie? Same movie, same example, except zero enthusiasm. You're telling people stuff. I watch everyone do this. You're telling people about something and where's your energy? If you don't have the energy, why would I go see it? Our physiology speaks volumes. Did you ever go to a different country? They speak a language you don't know. You could tell the happy, excited, sad, depressed people. You don't know one word they're saying. So think about that. The sex, so I get people to do that. And then after they do that, then I say, okay, now I want you to try to sell that movie apologetically or whatever it is that thing you're passionate about. So then, so then, um, then it would be more like, I saw this movie, uh, It's a Wonderful Life, it's really empowering. I mean, I mean, you can go see it if you want, no, no obligation. I, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to push this movie on you by all means, you know, you're busy and stuff, but, but it's a really good movie and, and it really bonds with kids. You'll cry at the end. But again, you know, I, I know how busy you are and, and it's like five bucks on, 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 on uh, you know, on your, on Netflix and think about that. How many times do you apologize for the sale? You talk about, I'm going to do a pool. I've I literally had a pool guy at my house. I'm thinking of doing my whole pool over. The guy's going through and he's like so excited. He goes, Dean, we'll take this down. Your kids are an age down. They don't need a slide. They need this. And you could put the, and he's going, 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 going. And he gets done. He goes, but you know, I, I, I don't want you to think I'm, I'm trying to be pushy here. He had the sale. Like, had it and talked himself out. I don't want you to think I'm pushy and, and just because, you know, I watch you on TV and stuff. I don't want you to think just because you got money that, that I'm going to charge a lot. I, I'm going to be really fair with you. But hey, I just want to be one. And if you're getting other, pra uh, the guy was literally like backpedaling and talking himself out of the sale. I wanted to shake him and go, dude, you had the yes. Shut up and ask for my credit card. But he was excited until he asked for the money. So I get people to do that exercise. Then I say to them, um, then I say to them, okay, now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do the same thing, talk about the same thing. But I want you to do it with enthusiasm. And I want you to be more transparent. transparent. And this is the part um, that I wrote down that was really important I wanted to share with you. When it comes to selling and persuasion and getting people to say yes, I want you to think about sharing some of the things you were once embarrassed to talk about. Mm, how about that? I want you to talk about and share the things that were the most painful. That's what makes you human. That's what makes you real. The most painful thing in my life, hands down, most painful thing I've ever experienced was going through a divorce and knowing I don't see my kids half the time. It hurt so bad I never told anybody. I didn't tell you guys. I didn't tell my friends. I hid it because I'm like, I'm the success guy and I can't save my marriage. Like it felt, but besides that, when I took the, when I knew the marriage was over, now it's now I have to separate from my kids. They're, they're my life. I, I make them breakfast every day, family meetings, all that stuff. I, 
It was the worst thing in my life. I was so scared. But if you're on here, you guys were some of the first people I ever shared it with in my inner circle. It's about, I don't know, six months ago, I went deep and I shared it. When I shared it, the bond, the connection, if you were on, I don't know if you were on and remember, I remember the connection and the bond that we had. I didn't just share it and say, oh, I went through divorce. I taught a lesson through it, but that immediately builds rapport, not because I'm trying to be sneaky, because I'm just being honest. I want you to think about, we're going to go back to the third way to share it with somebody. I want you to think about what could you share that shows how human you are, that relates to what it is that you're offering. What's up? What's up? Hey, before you go, you need to watch these next few videos. They're absolute game changers. Hurry up and click right over here and watch them and I'll see you there.